To start this month's episode, some footage of the unreleased prototype CD system that Sony and Nintendo worked on together back in the 90s has been filmed and released online, courtesy of Engadget. The system was found by a father and son at an auction for $75, and it still works, although it can only play SNES titles with the disk drive not functional. How different the gaming scene might have been if this console had seen the light of day, eh? On the topic of unearthing what was thought long lost, UK collector Alex Crowley has found working versions of what may be the rarest Nintendo game ever made, arcade title Sky Skipper. Unsuccessful commercially when it was released back in 1981, the cabinets that held the game were modified to run Popeye instead. Crowley has converted these boards back to running Sky Skipper though, which is no easy feat. He plans to reconstruct a cab for the game too, using artwork from a promotional flyer he has to hand, and then tour the machine around the UK. Moving on, a Kickstarter was launched in November for a book titled Ultimate Nintendo – Guide to the NES Library, and as its name would suggest, reviews over 750 of the games released for the 8-bit system. It's already smashed its $16,500 goal, but there's still time to back the project, with a $60 pledge ensuring you a physical copy of the book. On a similar note, the website Legends of Localization is releasing a book as well, and is focused on detailing the differences between the Japanese and Western versions of The Legend of Zelda on the NES. It's the first in what will become a series, with a copy setting you back $29 plus shipping. Next, Rare published a video showing footage of 12 Tales Conquer 64 for the N64. This was before the game got a severe makeover and ended up as Conker's Bad Fur Day, which let's just say was a little less kid-friendly. And to round off this section, one of the largest unofficial servers for playing the Dreamcast and GameCube versions of Fantasy Star Online, Schutzserv, has sadly shut down. There's a lot of Nintendo news to cover in this section this month, with the Wii U's eShop receiving several ports. These include Game Boy Advance titles Mega Man Battle Network 5 Team, Colonel and Proto Man, Metabots AX, Metabee and Rokushu, and Contra Advance, The Alien Wars EX. It received a quartet of NES games too, The Adventures of Bayou Billy, Ninja Gaiden 2 The Dark Sword of Chaos, Ninja Gaiden 3 The Ancient Ship of Doom, and Double Dragon 3 The Sacred Stones. In other Wii U news, a HD remake of the GameCube title The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess was announced, and is to be released on the 4th of March next year. As I always appreciate the input of others, I asked 148 Apps editor and self-professed Zelda expert Glenn Fox what he'd like to see in this re-release too. We'll obviously want a few more improvements than just nicer visuals. For starters, Nintendo should take advantage of that gamepad. Let it be your map and inventory screen. We should also be able to use the gyroscope to aim the bow and arrow or hookshot. Imagine how much of a game changer that would be when fighting an opponent's back. There is one thing we categorically do not want though, and that's those horrific motion controls for combat. Moving on to the 3DS, there was only one retro release on the eShop for the system, Toki Tori 3D, which is a port of the PC remaster of the Game Boy Color original from 2001. It was announced that Pokemon Red, Blue and Yellow will come to the system on February the 27th though, and will come with the capability to trade and battle the pocket monsters with your friends over the handheld's wireless communication features. We also got confirmation that Dragon Quests 7 and 8 are heading to the west for the portable, summer for the former, and just a vague 2016 for the latter. And to round off all this 3DS news, a range of Sega related retro themes are available to download on it including ones based around the Mega Drive and Game Gear. For Sony fans, new retro offerings were a little harder to find, with PlayStation 4 owners receiving Arcade Archives Nova 2001 through PSN. What a treat! I will add that PS4 and PS Vita owners based in North America can download SNES Classic Super Star Wars though. To finish, a port of Xbox title Oddworld Munch's Odyssey was released for iOS and Android devices, and the Umihara Kawashi trilogy was made available to download on Steam. Not much news here this month, but a modification to the GameCube called GC Video, adding HDMI output for the system, has been released. This alteration may end up costing you £167, but if you're game, I've included a couple of links with more information about it in this video's description. Second, the beta testing stage for the PSIO, a cartridge that allows you to play games from an SD card on a PlayStation, has begun, and the videos of the add-on seem promising, with some speedy load times on show. 
No definite release date has been set in stone for the device just yet, but one will set you back 149 Australian dollars when they do become available. First up is Star Chaser for the Mega Drive, with the ROM free to download. Second is Blaze for the Commodore Amiga, which is effectively a poorly disguised port of Sonic the Hedgehog. Talking of the blue blur, a demo of Sonic Team Racing for the Mega Drive has been made available online. Whether we'll ever get a full version of it, who knows? I'll be sure to keep you posted. Moving on to more obscure titles, Magnavox Odyssey title Oddball had a limited edition re-release, with the few copies being sold for $65 each. Sadly, they all seem to have been sold. Sorry about that. Here's a picture of a duck wearing a bow tie to make it up to you. To finish up then, indie hit Gunman Clive has been ported to the Game Boy, and an impressive looking platformer for the Mega Drive called Tanglewood was announced, but no release date has been given for that just yet. Quite a few fan translations this month, with all but one being for the NES. They include Onyanko Town, Double Moon Densetsu, Gekyotsu Yonku Battle, Taito Chase HQ, Atlantis no Nazo, Wu Shi Hun, and Tesuri Kichi Sanpei, Blue Marlin Hen. The exception to this NES domination was Wizardry Empire, Fukatsu no Su, for the Game Boy. That's all for this month then, but thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I'd also appreciate you giving this video a like, but that's completely up to you, of course. I'd also like to say thanks to Glenn Fox for his Zelda contribution, and you can follow him on Twitter at Foxy underscore Glenn. He'd also love it if you could visit his website, 148 Apps, too. It's about mobile games or something. If you'd like to be a contributor to a future edition of the Retro News Roundup, please do let me know as well. I'd be happy to hear from you. I am the leader of the revolutionary army known as the Reapers.